Um, hi everybody. I think we should be live. Yeah, I see us. Okay. Sweet. Okay. We should uh, check our mics. Yeah, my mic is registering and talk. I'm sure yours is too. Yours is registering too, so I assume people can see it, can hear us. Uh, let's see. I want to go watch live videos so I can see comments. Oop. Hi, live. Carolyn. I got to go. turn my volume down here. Uh, let's see. Hi, Carolyn. Okay, now you guys won't get feedback. Hi, let's see, we got Carolyn Weinert, Denise Shelton, Karen Herndon. She says we can hear you. Kim Carlton Lugers. I hope I pronounced that right. She can hear us. Everyone says they can hear us. We got Winnipeg, Canada, Ottawa, Canada. Hi, Judell. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> well, Teresa was saying hi to me, so I said hi back to her. So, uh, hello from Michigan. Let's see. I'm going to try and adjust my screens just a little bit here. They're a little crooked. Rainy North Carolina. You know what? It's really rainy here in Montana today, too. Um, really rainy. So, I feel ya in North Carolina. <laughs> West Virginia, Northern Ireland. Hi, Ireland. That's Stephanie McLean. Loud and clear in Texas. Betty. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Kelly Hodges. Another West Virginia. Um, hopefully you guys had a good Thanksgiving and a good few weeks off from our, um, from our classes. Hopefully they were sewing. <laughs> Mom says hopefully you were sewing if you didn't hear that, but you should because her mic should work just like mine. So, um, let's see. If you guys have any questions about anything so far, let me know in the comments and we'll try and get those um we'll try and get those answered here in the next half hour i was going to show you a couple things because now that you're doing now that you're on to the queen size um workshop these queen borders are very flexible and you can use them on tons of our patterns. So I thought I would give you guys a little bit of a, maybe a rundown, 15 minute rundown here of how our borders work, how our mixers work, because if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you can use this stuff for lots of other projects in the future. So I got to switch over to my internet view here. Okay, so I'm on our website at quiltworks.com and the first thing I'm going to do is go to products and patterns. And on this page, you can scroll through and just on the first page of um, patterns here, there is Prancing Peacock and Prancing Peacock has the D border on it that we will be using Today. or we'll be doing next week. So yeah. that's the D border for next week. And then obviously there's Macaw Queen. Um, and then if we, you can just start scrolling through the pages here and you can see different patterns that have the borders built in. But the other thing is we have a lot of patterns that don't have the borders built in. So for example, if you click on Macaw, and I'm gonna show you with Macaw just because that's the one we're working with, but I can show you a couple others too. Then you click buy now on Macaw. Teresa says she ate too much turkey. 
Um, I ate too much stuffing. That's my favorite part. Um, macaw is sized so that you can add a C border and then you can add a D border. And then each of the individual D borders and C borders that work with the quilt are listed. We're going to specifically be doing Flying Geese Queen next week and then we're doing the Star Point border this week. So any of our designs that can be expanded um, and they start as a 57 inch quilt, which is the macaw size, that can have the C border and the D border added. Or if they're 68 inch to start, then you can add just your D borders. So, um, for example, let's click on Wishing Star. So Wishing Star is 57 inches. So if you scroll down on this page, you can see it says 57 inches. And then when you click on buy now, because it's 57 inches, you'll see some border options here. You'll see C borders and you'll see D borders. So you can get both of those. Um, in our older designs, so anything that was published prior to this last month, because I didn't get clever until this last month, so I'm sorry. Um, we also have extra information in introduction booklets. So that's what these two booklets are here on this page. There's a queen size introduction booklet and a wall size. So the introduction booklets have a lot of information in them about the layouts that can be expanded. There's newsprint for how to assemble it. These ones specifically are kind of cool in that they also have blank templates for the J, K, L, and B groups. So that means you can go in with our mixer patterns later on and you can use this booklet and you can use blank templates in place of some of the paper piece elements if you want. It helps you manage the cost of the project or you might just want something that's a bold splash of a big printed color in one of those locations. And um, those templates give you the option. So you get lots of great stuff in these intro booklets, but you also get um, a lot of that in your patterns. So starting in November, I started putting the expansion size layout sheets into the original patterns as well. It means you might pay a few dollars more for the original pattern, but then you won't have to buy these introduction booklets if you want to expand it. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, I do want to go back and start updating some of our older designs so that that's the case, but it will take me a little bit time of time to get through that. So I can't promise you that they're all going to be done by the end of the month or anything like that. It's going to take some time. So, but the point is, is that these borders that we're going to teach you, they can go on lots and lots of our designs. So, um, how do you know which designs they can go on? Well, some of that is based on size. Um, we don't have, it doesn't say, by the way, this one will take the C border and this one will take the D border on the main page. But what you can do is click on any of the patterns that you're looking for. So if you click on Silver Shores, then you can click on Buy Now. And if it can be expanded, the borders are going to be included in that booklet. So hopefully, that helps you understand how you can get to um, certain sizes there. So, um, let's see. I also thought I would point out, someone said they went, let's see, Deborah Hall said she went to Cabo. That must be for Thanksgiving and had tacos. Um, we spent one year in Mexico for Thanksgiving and it was really fun. So I hope you had an awesome time. <coughs> excuse me, Betty says, what would you suggest for a beginner to begin with? Well, honestly, Betty, I would suggest something like our macaw pattern, which is the one we're doing now, and just start with the wall size. All the videos are available online, and it's a fairly straightforward pattern to put together. It's really fun to work on it. There are lots of other projects that we have that are beginner patterns as well. Some of them do have video support on um, 
our YouTube channel. So you can certainly go there and see what's there. Um, in fact, I'm going to take you there real quick because I'm going to show you guys something there. YouTube.com. So on our YouTube page, you can see um, a playlist button here. Under that playlist, you'll see things like Macaw Queen, Macaw Live Events, Cosmic Shimmer, Trafari Jewels. Those are all the names of patterns that we have videos or at least partial videos um, for online. So that's a great place to start. If you like any of those designs, you can definitely um, start there and you get full length workshops with them. So um, it's key to click on playlists for that because then we've pulled a whole bunch of videos together that help you guys do each of those designs. And even if Macaw is your first one, if you're thinking of starting a second one after this is done, this is a great place to go because you can click on any of these and choose your next project and get um, workshops for them. Some of them are more advanced, like the Valley Blossoms one. The Valley Blossoms work session is a more advanced design, but um, a lot of them are beginner ones, so you can pick and choose where you want to start from. Um, so I'm going to click through a couple more pages here just to show you. Um, Iceberg Ridge uses both the C border and the D border from this pattern. Wintergreen uses the C border. Um, so these are all patterns that use what we're teaching you today, uh, which I think is awesome because even if you don't have the whole design as a workshop, you can start with the ones that you do, and I think you'll do a pretty good job picking up on the techniques and the process as you go along. Um, there's a couple more here. Let's see. I know there's one coming up here. The water lily uses the same border. We are almost out of that pattern. Um, and then moon catcher uses both the A and the B, or sorry, the C and the D groups that we're doing in this project as well. That was the key one that I wanted to pull up for you. Um, someone said, what is your most complicated pattern? Go ahead, mom. <laughs> what do you think the most complicated one is? Valley wedding star. So the Bally Wedding Star, and it's also our number one selling pattern. But well, the reason it why it's complicated is because you have a lot of curved piecing. So when you're done with the, all of the units, you basically have four curves within a block that you have to get that block to lay down. So it takes um, very precise sewing where what we're working on today, that precise sewing isn't as, it's not as hard to get there. Basically, the reality of what we teach is paper piecing, and paper piecing takes most people anywhere from 20 to 35 hours to learn the process. All other types of quilting you're looking at six months to a year of doing quite a bit of sewing to get the hang of how to do traditional piecing, how to make all your parts fit. Um, most traditional piecing, you have seams that come together from block to block. You have to match everything. With paper piecing, we don't have to worry about that because Normally, if there's something that matches, it's going to be from the outside edge of a block or we put in a TRP line. And it makes it a lot easier to see where to match up units. And we don't bring any of our points out to the lines, to the edge of the block, so everything floats. So you don't have to worry about losing points. In general, paper piecing is... You just have to learn the steps to it. And 
other people when they design paper piecing a lot of them actually design them in more of a uh, traditional form where they bring all the points out to the edge and we don't even when we're doing a simple star we're going to float the points anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half an inch sometimes we float them an inch and what it does is you get the design but it floats within your backgrounds so just because it's um basically all of our patterns once you understand the process of paper piecing they're easy until you get into the wedding rings and it's because the wedding rings are assembled they're just a lot harder pattern to assemble but everybody makes one eventually it seems like anyway so <laughs> well they're pretty they're they're very pretty and even if it's our most complicated still the paper takes a ton of the challenge out of it um, yeah. at least for the main piecing once you get to the curved sewing you're kind of on your own but um, it does take like all of your pieces that you're going to curve piece at least start out in the correct size when so. you're working with circles and spikes and veins, it's a lot of it is learning how to do the pro learning the process. And we have a lot of instructors out there that are teaching classes and they walk our students through all of those techniques. So if you really want to go through the process of learning most of the techniques, um, take a class from one of our certified instructors on one of the technique of the months because they try to enter the technique of the month quilts we try to put as many different techniques as we possibly can into them so that when you get done with one you just kind of look at the rest of our patterns and go oh yeah I can do that I know how to do that I know how to do that and um, so it's really just a learning different techniques, learning how to make a lone star, learning how to work with curves. Um, spikes are really easy because they're New York beauty. Um, strip piecing is very easy to do. And, and then it's just learn the assembly process. And our assembly process is easy as well because we don't force you into having to match a lot of points so we try to build patterns where when the main seams are assembled they don't match up to the the block group that's next to them um i also wanted to show you guys while we had a few minutes see i gotta get there i'm gonna switch back over to the internet here for a minute um, I wanted to show you in Quiltster how you get, um, let's see, hold on, I'm going to repeat. Jane left a comment. She said, this is my first paper piece top, and I just couldn't contain myself and went in to finish. Your instructions are so clear and easy to follow. I totally thank you for that. I'm watching now to see if I did it right. <laughs> well, if it's all together, it's done right. And if you make a mistake and you still sew it up, it's still done right. Unless you decide to pick it out and do it the other way. But You might pick up some tips and tricks along the way, though, yeah. that might make it easier for the next time. So, um, so I switched back to Quiltster here because we talked about the fact that we've used those borders on a number of our quilts, but they are also are available just as mixer chapters. So... What is a mixer? So Quiltworks designs, and we've kind of gone over this a couple times a little bit. We've designed, we we set up our patterns based on um, a layout. A layout, and then we build lots and lots of blocks to fit inside of those. So you can go if you have a Quiltster account, and I know some of you got got one so that you can play around with the project here, but you can go in and. Um, I'm on, so I'm in the pattern library where you can choose a pattern to work on. And then you can come down and choose types and choose mixer patterns. So mixer patterns allow you to choose your borders. 
So in something like tequila lime, this finishes to 68 inches. So you could go in and choose that and then you could choose a D border to add. And one of the D borders you can choose is the Flying Geese Queen, which we're gonna do next week. Um, the same thing with many of these designs. And then there's also ones where you can start from scratch. So we're actually working on a Stella Maris design and we are doing, looks like we got to go to the next page. That's the four round. We need three rounds. So we're doing this three round C border mixer. So I can click on this and I can customize it and give this a name. And now I can add blocks to this. Yeah, and notice all we have there is just a layout. It's just a bunch of blank um, sections. We so, call them slots. Well, we technically call them groups. Yeah, so that's true too. If you click on that one, it's C group, and it pops up all of these choices here, and then you can choose to add the star point queen border. You might see some things on here that aren't available to you guys if you're really inspecting it because I have an admin account, so some of our design pieces are in there. Um, so that adds the star point and then you can go in and you can see the um, options for different borders that you can add and you can choose a, a border. The one we're doing is the Flying Geese Queen so I'm going to choose that. And then even though the center blocks that we created were from Macaw for this quilt that we've been teaching you, you can choose other borders here. So, or other blocks. Or other blocks in the center. So I'm gonna save and close that. I'm not gonna add fabric for now. And you can go in and we can choose something entirely new here. I'm gonna turn off auto save because it's slowing me down just a tiny bit. Accept. So if I click in here, the block in Macaw was this one, but I can choose something different. I could choose this one. And then, like I said, if you happen to have one of those introduction booklets, you can even choose, so if I wanted this to just be a solid color because I had a really crazy cool print, I could choose that and it'll load in a blank block. And then I don't have to buy a paper piecing section for that because the templates I need are already in the instruction booklet. And then I might want to get a little bit more creative here. So I'm going to choose pine cone. And now I've basically created a quilt here that uses all of the same, um, that uses the same borders that I just taught you, but uses different pieces in the center. So it's just a really, it is a really fun thing to play with. And um, I've now created my own pattern. So these are coming up soon as elements that you'll be able to click add to cart and you can order in all of these blocks right from Quiltster. Right now you can go to our website and find that specific layout and then you can just order the elements from the website but it is coming soon for quiltster and adding your favorite fabrics is really just as easy as clicking on the block it opens up a folder and we're going to go in and choose the company we want to work with so i'm going to choose hoffman fabrics just for fun today oops i went past them and then you can choose the designer that you want to work with. Uh, Quiltster just popped on. So Deb's watching. She says, cattail mixers are published to the marketplace within the last hour. So now oh, there's really? two groups. So Meadowstar mixers are published, so you can buy those in the marketplace now. And so are cattail mixers. So I'm actually going to do a, probably a live video on that next week when I have slightly more time here and um, I'll show you how you can order them or how you can uh, 
Um, and then how you can step forward and also create with those as well. You can, you can just go in and order the individual elements, but you can't color the quilt. If you have a, if you don't have a quiltster subscription, but if you have a quiltster subscription, then you can choose your, um, then you can go in and you can add fabrics and choose what it's all going to look like. So we're just going to do something Christmassy here because it's Christmas. All right, close. Way to go, Quiltster, by the way. That always makes me happy to hear that those things are moving forward. I don't know what collection, I chose a Christmas collection here just because it's Christmas time. So I don't know if any of these fabrics are available or maybe they're brand new and they're not even out yet. I'm not sure, but I really think this collection is pretty. Let's do a different green. Anyway. We don't make quilts at Quiltworks anymore without having Quiltster um, at our fingertips and having done the design in Quiltster because it's um, just too great <laughs> to have it all figured out. And um, it does all the work for you. It does all of the planning work for you if you're not going to, I mean, if you're going to follow the pattern, then all the information is there. But if you're going to create something that's new to you and different from how we laid the fabric out in the pattern, Quiltster is very, very useful for that process. Um, and then I'm not going to color the whole thing because it's almost one o'clock here, but I do want to show you here real quick as soon as I get this block colored that it gives you yardage and all of your yardage information, which is wonderful. Okay, so we got a block colored here, a few blocks colored. And before we leave our fun little project here, I'm just gonna click on yardage over here in the, it's on the right hand side. And you can see there's fabrics. It has all of the fabric SKUs listed. It tells you how many, um, it tells you what the total yardage is for the whole quilt. There's also a block here you can press um, where it gives you the, um, Cutting information. fabric reference and the cutting information so in addition to the fact that you need a total of eighth yard an eighth of a yard of this fabric it says you're going to use that for j3 and you need one two and a half inch strip whereas the next one is k1 and you need four four and a half inch strips so you get this information right from quiltster and then there's by group so by group matches your pattern so by now you guys have seen the unit charts in your instructions and you see that they're all organized by your J group, then your K group, then your L groups. So this has all of the fabrics organized by J and then you can scroll down and you can see the K fabrics and the L fabrics. And then I haven't filled those in yet, but um, you can see which swatch you used for each of those and the information that you get here matches what's in that table. So. Quiltster is a pretty amazing tool. We love it here. Um, it gives you so many more options once you start working with our quilts. And like I said, sometime in the next couple days, I'm going to do a live video on how to use the, um, how to order mixers out of um, Quiltster. And hopefully that will, um, show you guys all something new that you haven't seen before and open up some new opportunities. So, okay, it's one o'clock, Mom. Yay, <laughs> it's time to start. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, first of all, Aunt Judel, oh, she does have that one. So I just want you guys to see that I finished the quilt, the white background quilt. Um, it's all together. 
And then behind my table, I actually have parts of what we're going to go over today. And um, so I'm going to go start explaining all of this stuff to you. So this is a review from last week. And Judell's actually, we're going to post some other pictures. But basically, you guys have an element like this. So you've made all of the parts if you've done your part, all your paper piecing. And then when you get done, you sew this piece is sewn onto here and this one is sewn onto here. And then for the corner pieces, it's the same thing. We have our background. We have the little strip piecing units. Then we have the other half of our star group. And then we have this piece right here, which is a K group, and then the very center. So it basically starts from the outside and goes in with the assembly graphics, All right? So I just want you to see the different um, parts to it. After you get all the parts done, I will tell you, pay attention. Put it on the wall when you're working with rainbow quilts. It's so easy to mess it up. I have made this quilt three times this last week because every time I leave it then I come back and I don't look at where I'm at and it's so easy to get pieces in the wrong spot. Now sometimes it doesn't matter if you get them in the wrong spot as long as you're happy with how it sets up but sometimes you may have to move them because you end up with the pieces coming together in a spot where they're not supposed to. So. Look at it very closely before you start sewing it together. Make sure everything's in the position and then pull the pieces off one at a time and start assembling them. And keep looking at it because sometimes you won't see it when it's all on the wall. And then you get it all done and you think, well, something's not right. And you're, some of the pictures that Judel is going to put out there of me assembly, doing the assembly, you're going to notice that because I have some pieces in the wrong place. So I had to go back and pick them out, put them back in the right place. All right. One of the things I forgot to do is because I lost some of my um, white fabric. I lost a template because I had thrown it away. So I didn't get it cut out. So then I went back and I cut it out. And I'm just looking at it. I think, oh, those are supposed to be black. So I put black pieces right here and when I was all done Judel came and said mom those are supposed to be white so I picked it apart and then we put the white <laughs> in there again. So, do you, when do you want me to show those other images? Yeah Judel will show you those images. So you know you have to make the decision when you sew something in the wrong place whether or, or if you change something and you don't like it. It has to be your decision on where you're going to go. After you get all of the pieces together then you're basically going to start assembling the groups and put it together just like these side pieces are set up right here. All right. Okay. Do you want me to show them that now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let Hold Judel on. show you that right now. So there's our first uh, round of uh, units. That is actually just your border pieces and everything on that part's correct. All right. Whoops, that's the last one. Oh, are we in the wrong order? Yeah, there's the next round, okay? And that's where I started making mistakes and putting things <laughs> in the wrong spot, where I should have had another white in there. But Me, And where she means white. It should have been, right? Let's see, there's a, I don't know if you, hopefully you guys can see my mouse, but... See where right this now. white diamond is at the bottom? There should have been. Next to it should have been another white piece that brought that out to a And the reason I made diamond. that mistake is because I lost the template. And I just kind of set it aside and said, oh, I'll come back and fix it later. And by then I wasn't in my instructions and I didn't get it on the right color. I, it should have been white. So then we fixed it. So, so she added it so you can see it's the black here that piece should be white and you'll see that when she fixes it but this is essentially the next step to assembly 
Um, so notice how I'm putting everything I'm going through and doing all of the same pieces at the same time. And then this is basically the, is this where you're at right now? Yeah. Yeah, this is what I'm showing them here. Okay, so this is the ending point. So after she's added the group B or the group J and the group K to those pieces. So, okay, are we All ready right. to switch back? So you guys can go back and look at those and see how, to, how you're going to put them together. So today we're going to get into the border and I want you to notice that I have one one complete border here i have this one is broke up into groups and um we're going to be going back and forth between these um i had you guys cut your strips i went ahead and did some pre-cutting today because i didn't want you guys to have to watch me sort papers paste all of the little colors on and cut everything out so i only left a few pieces here for us to cut so in your instructions um i'm working out of a, a uh what will you call this a mixer booklet and i know that a few of you may have purchased the mixer booklet because you might have bought macaw as a small one and then you added on to the the two borders onto it okay and in that case you would have been in a mixer if you bought the queen size macaw pattern then you actually got it was all set up for you so i want to go over a few things here if you have a mixer booklet um, there's some additional information on page six and that's for a rainbow quilt it's not the way that we're doing ours it's a different way to set it up so if you followed those instructions, what you would end up with is you would have eight colors that you would have eight colors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It goes to eight. We only have four colors on the outside and then we have four colors on the inside. But those instructions are set up so you'd have eight colors on the outside and eight different colors on the inside, okay? If you bought the queen size pattern, then you won't have that set of instructions in there. So just understand that if you have the mixers and you see that rainbow option, that's a little bit different than um, the fault main cutting instructions, is, which is what we're working with, okay? All right, so basically I'm going to go through just a few things before I start cutting. Um, I'm going to, on your foundation sheets, you're going to have four papers and that's your, uh, NP 617 and each one of those, um, uh, foundation sheets includes enough pieces to make one of these borders. So you're going to have four of those. So when you get ready to do this, just go ahead and stack all of those papers and cut them all out and then you'll have all your papers group together. You'll have four of number one paper, four of number two, and so forth. All right. Each one of these foundation units that we have here has a number on it. Your corners are called unit C1. And then the next piece here is unit C2. And it goes all the way up to 20. After you get all your sewing done, make sure that the papers stay with those units because you need to know where they go, all right? You can't put C4 in the place of C1, even if they're the same color. You need to keep them all in order in sequence from 1 to 20, all right? Um, the second sheet, um, the TP426, that page there is the those are for your um the template layout sheets for the little v pieces in here and the little triangles that go in the center and those go with your rainbow fabrics the eight fabrics okay and so in when you get to the cutting instructions it'll tell you how to separate them out but that's what those sheets are for 
when you get to the one at the top, that TP427, that's for all your background pieces, okay? And so that's where all the white comes in. It also includes the pieces for the end. And there again, it'll tell you how much to cut out for it. If you put your little swatches on here, it will help you a lot when you start working through it because it keeps everything in the order in which it's set up on this sheet, right? At the top of page two in your mixer booklet, if you're doing the queen, it's gonna be a different page. But on the next page, there should be a color layout. On that color layout, it basically tells you where your colors are going to go in there. So we have an A, B, C, D, and then we repeat an A, B, C, D. And on the outside ones, it's a, it basically says the same thing, okay? Last, when we were here, the last time we were together, we went through the cutting of the strips process, okay? And I've shown you in some of your previous uh, videos how to take the foundation papers and put them into bags and also take the template layout sheets and sort those to go with your fabric colors, okay? So I have fabric C2A, well, my first color here was fabric C1, which are actually all in my background fabrics. And I already cut these out so you guys didn't have to watch me cut all those sheets. So in your, when you guys are doing this, just pay attention to how you cut everything out. It's exactly, just follow the instructions. I can't explain it to you any better than the way the instructions are written. Fabric C2A to C2D. Those are for, uh, those are all our colors, and I'm going to go through those and cut them out for you. All right. And here again, when I get through doing my demo, you guys need to go back and actually read your instructions and follow it by the steps because I've done this so many times that I'm just going to move through it. You're going to watch me cut things and, and do all the steps on it. But you need to go back and read and mark off the steps as you go so that you don't get things in the wrong place. Fabric C3A and C3D, those are actually the little tiny pieces. And these are for the little triangles that fit in between there. Okay. So I'm going to have triangles and then I'm going to have what I call a triangle border and that's this. So those are the two terms you want to think about. This is my triangle, this is my triangle border, and these are my background pieces. All right. After we get the other thing you want to do and I'm going to lay that out for you is when you get this color layout, when you're going through the color layout and you cut the swatches to put them on the first page, then what I want you to do <clears throat> is you're gonna set these papers up and I don't have room to set them all up on my table, so I'm just going to do a few of them. I have the background templates paired with these, but I want you to see what I did. So this is my C unit C1. And then we have my unit C2 here, which is going to fit over here. I have C3. Okay. I have C4. And I have a C5. All right. So those are my four color groups. Then when I repeat, then I'm going to, let's see, one, two, three, four. C5 is going to be a repeat because it's the same color as number one, okay? And then my C6 is going to be the same color as number two. And then these should all pair up. And when we're done, we're going to have four pieces in, in each stack, all right? Now, there's going to be two ways in which we're going to assemble these pieces. One way is written, written in your instructions, and the other way I'm going to go through it because some of you might find the second way to be a little bit easier, all right? 
I like to be able to take all my foundation papers, number every single paper, and in this case we have 80 of them, <coughs> excuse me, and then when I start paper piecing, all my fabric is stacked in order and I just run through all 80 pieces for section one, then do 80 of section two, and everything's stacked in order. The other way you can do it is after you get all of your little swatches on your paper, pair them up and you can do all your pink and red papers together because there's going to be 20 of them. You can do all your purple and orange papers together because there'll be 20 of those and so forth on there. But you have to lay it all out first. You can't just pick up four papers and just sew those colors onto it. And they're, even though they're all the same size, the reason why <clears throat> is because we have um, these designated TRP lines on here. So when I sew this border onto any one of my quilts, no matter what border quilt I use with the Stella Maris um, mixer group, those little lines are going to line up on my main, on my inner quilt right there. And then I have some of those lines out here. And these lines are going to line up to the queen size border. And you might not think that that's all that important, but you have to remember, if you know how to sew, you're going to find that as you sew with bigger pieces, they have a tendency to stretch more than smaller ones. And what the more sewing you have, the more it's going to eat up. And when you're done, it may not be as big as what it's supposed to be. So by having these registration lines, you can take a border, a big border, and when you lay it down onto an inner border, so if I take my clean border, lay it down on here, and I match those, then I'm going to find out if there's some fullness in there. And if I have to ease some pieces in to make all that come together and fit, that's what that's how I know that I've either stretched something or maybe my seam allowances are a little bit too big on the the smaller border on the inside. So those those things will really help you. Those TRP lines really help you to fit the big borders onto the the center pieces. And that's why you can't just pick up a paper and do four, 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 and four. So if I look at this, when I'm done, I would have different groups in each stack. And so like my first stack, um, I'm gonna actually start with my first stack when I'm done, I'm gonna have, for my pink ones, my pink and red, I'm gonna have a C20 in my stack a 16, a C16, a C12, a C8, and a C4. Paper will all be the same colors, okay? So that's kind of where I'm going to go with my demonstrations now, is go through all of these steps so that you can see how it's done, right? So we're, let's just go ahead and put everything back in order. We've got all of our fabric swatches on our papers. This one is my C5 and I messed that up so we're going to go put it back in here where it belongs these are going to go here and I'm going to take my C1 paper and my C20 paper and I usually will just set them off to the side in the process of setting this together you got to get the papers attached okay and there's my extra templates. All right, so we're going to start with the cutting on this one. We've already cut all the background pieces. So we have all of our background templates and I've sorted all of the pieces that go with the corner ones out. Now we're going to get a ruler and we're going to start cutting and sometimes it doesn't matter if you start on line one and other times it does so we're going to actually take this and we're going to cut line two i'm cutting through eight layers of fabric here 
And I've already cut half of this out, so you're only going to see me cutting. This is only for two sets that we're lining up because we already made half of it. I recommend you guys make all four of them at the same time, not have to do it twice. Okay, before I pick these up, I want to make sure that I'm getting them in order. So this one says it's a section one template, and this is a section one template. So we're going to take the section one pieces. I must have a little something catching here. And that's a, a section one C1. This is a section three. This is a section one. Section three, section one, three, one. Three, one, and three. Okay, so I have all my threes in the same pile, and I have all my ones in the same pile. Okay, now we're going to, if I read my instructions, it's going to tell me to take these and set these up and divide all my colors. So we're going to pull the paper clips off, and we're going to sort the colors. So we're going to pull the templates off, and I'm going to put all of my pink in a pile. I was just double checking there because some one of the templates was a little bit bigger, but it was just because it was on the end of the paper. So now we have our pink in a pile. Now we're going to put the purple in a pile. Then we're going to do our blue. And we're going to do teal. Now we're going to put our pink. Now we cuz we have two groups there. So we'll just get all of those grouped together. And actually, I think I want a second pile on those because I have four of every single one. So I'm going to clip it together in a group of four. And then we're going to do that again. Let's do it this way, a little bit faster. You got a message, Janice. Yeah. Rudiman, Rudiman, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, Janice, so sorry. But she says, I'm finding this fascinating. Some ladies from my um, guild have been to your workshops. And I have seen the results from those, but I had no idea how it all was put together. I will definitely give this a try next year. Yay! It's very fun. And it's not complicated. It's it's very organized and a lot of fun. And there's literally guides every step of the way. There's cutting guides. There's um, paper guides. There's TRP lines and smart corners so everything goes together. Um, there's all the yardage information is figured out for you, especially if you use Quiltster. So once you get started, it's surprising how much help we provide along the way to make these happen. So 
The and other thing that happens when you start making our quilts is once you start catching on to the different techniques and how things are done, you'll you end up at a point where you really don't you can look at the papers and pretty much pair the papers up with the layout sheets and put it with any color you want. And um, a lot of people do very little reading because of it, because they once they understand the process, it's not really a matter of they know how, what they're doing. And so a lot of our certified instructors, they actually can make the a whole quilt off of all of the foundation papers and templates without even having any instructions. And years ago, our instructors had to make their own template pieces to go onto the papers. And it, they did it. They didn't have any issues with it. They just figured out how to measure, how to do it, and they just take the papers and read the papers and move forward with it. Okay, so we have this pile. I forgot to separate those, but we'll get them. So we're going to have two groups of four with this one as well. Actually, I think there's two groups of five. I could be wrong. So we should have one, two, three, four. Now, a lot of times when you're working with our patterns, you don't have to go through this sorting of colors. And it's because we set it up in the stacking order so that when it's all, you're ready to sew, everything that you cut when you stacked your fabric in the cutting order, it's already in the order in which you're going to pick everything up. With a, when you're working with a rainbow quilt, it doesn't always come out that way. So it's just easier to go in and get all your colors sorted. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten. So I want to put five in each stack. few more paper clips. I'll just leave the can open. <laughs> Debbie Campbell says, hi from Puyallup, Washington, where my macaw is almost finished. Woo woo! We've seen a few finished projects come through on our Facebook support network. If you guys aren't part of that, um, I would highly recommend it. So go out on Facebook, type in Quiltwork Support Network, and ask to join. And you get into a great group of ladies who 
not only help with questions, but also provide lots of good inspiration, show you finished projects. Um, and uh, actually, um, at the end, I'm going to show you, I have a couple kits that we're selling on um, Quiltster Support Network for the Macaw Queen. So if you're watching this and you don't have a project and you're like, oh, I'd really love to do that, we can show you a couple of those, but one of them is a purple um, macaw. The other thing, maybe Elise can post a little link to it too, because mom's gonna be doing a little bit of sorting here. But um, the purple macaw, I. It says it's sold out, but I was able to cut one more kit. So I can go in and change the quantity on that and we will have one more available. And then there's also some really awesome ones with tulip pink fabrics that are out there. There's a couple wall size and a couple um, queen size that are available. And I got more black fabric so I can actually cut more of the Tula Pink Queen. I think there's only one left listed, but the rest of the fabric showed up yesterday. So anyway, I'm kind of excited about that. Okay, so we have all of our colors separated here, but I do, I did tell you to put those in stacks of four. You guys are gonna put them in stacks of four. I have to do stacks of two because I've already done two groups. So I'm going to actually take each one of these and I'm just going to go like this. I'm not going to paper clip them together right at the moment. And then we're going to take our purples. We have all of the purples set here. So I should have one, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to stack all of these right now like that because those go with those templates and I don't need the rest of them. And then on these, it's the same thing. I actually need those in groups of two instead of the way I set it up. And here again, I'm not going to clip them all together. You'll see why in a minute. Remember, you're going to have four in a, each one of these little piles. And you should have a template piece that goes onto each one of them that you can put back onto it when you're done. That way, if you have to put it together, you won't forget where you're at with it. That and not stack. So we have two. Was my kids. <laughs> Guess I forgot to turn my cell phone off.
When I tell her I'm in the middle of a video, she'll be all embarrassed. <laughs> okay, so these are my C1s. So now this is the fun part. So I have my papers here and I'm going to take my stack. I have all of these in order. This one's number 19, number two's on the top. We're going to put C1, we're going to flip it upside down like that. And we're going to put 20 on the bottom like this. Okay. And then I'm going to flip all the rest of these upside down. And now we're going to start the stacking order. Okay, so we're going to look at this piece. And this particular one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 section pieces. All right. Now, you're supposed to have a template there so that you know where the sew side is. And this is actually my sew side, and this is for my section 5 right here. My templates are lost because we've been doing too much with it. Section four. This one, I do have the template there, and the sew side is right here. Now, when I lose a template, I'll actually move my paper clip and put my paper clip on my sew side. And so there's the right side of the fabric. And then I don't have to know what that is. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to show you the stacking order as if you were actually following the instructions, okay? But I'm not going to read everything as I go. This is actually section four right there. And then this piece, um, then we go to section three, which is one of these pieces. So that's going to be section three. And we're going to start with our paper clips. And then we're going to go to section two, which is my red. And I'm going to look because there's my sew side. So I'm going to go ahead and put that template back on it. And then we go to section one. And section one is oops this was section three this is my section three template that's why you want your templates and i don't have enough templates to do this today but you'll figure it out you guys will section two, three section two and this is section one so now because this is my end piece it has different it has a different amount as everything else so i'm actually just going to take that end piece once i get that figured out and i'm going to clip all of that together and we'll probably make that separately all right so i'm going to set that off to the side now we're going to start with this one and this is my C19, and what it's telling me is I need two pieces of fabric here, okay? And my sew side is right here, so I'm going to put a paper clip on my sew side. And then it tells me that I need um, my purple right here. And I'm just going to clip the sew side right there. And I'm going to set this in here just like that. And then it tells me that I need my C, um, C2, which is my orange. Okay. And then I need my C1 template, which is 
my purple over here. So I can stack all of these together just like that, but it's actually easier if I actually take this and then I pick up the next one. And this is actually my C18 right here. And then I would actually take my blue and I would put my blue on top of this one. And then we would have a blue on top of this one. And we would have a yellow on top of this one. And then I need another set of two for this one. Okay. Now I'm going to actually take the next paper here. And this is C17. And this tells me to put teal. So I'm working with my teal. I have my teal over here. There's two pieces. And it wants my green. And then it wants two more of this one. And every once in a while I'm going to slip a paper in there. Okay. Now then I go to my number 17 or 16 and I go pink. And this is the way the pattern is actually has you do that. And then we just run the whole thing through. So we go pink and then we go, we have red. And then we have to have two more of these. Okay. And now we start the process over again and we start our stacking. Okay. So now we're going to have our um, purple again. So this is where you guys have to decide how you're going to do it because you could actually set this up and have all of your purples in a pile all of and have them paired up with the colors they're supposed to be paired up with, which is my orange. And then just make all of that group, all of those groups. And then if you put all your colors on, you can go in and find all the papers that are purple and orange and put that in a stack or put this in a stack. But I'm going to keep going with this. And then I'll probably take you back and show you the other way to do it. Okay. So that's that one. And then we're going to go blue. And blue. And yellow. And I'm just going to take all of my whites because I know they're all going to end up in that pile right there and put them there. And then we're going to take our teal. Teal goes with green. And teal over here. Then we'll take the next one. We go to pink. Pink here. Pink goes with red. There, like that. And then we're going to go orange. Let's see, purple again. Purple. And orange. Midge Scott says hi from Australia. Yeah, Hello blue. from the United States. And yellow. This is number nine. Ten, number nine. So we're at teal again. Teal and green. And then we're going to go C8 is pink and red and pink and then we're at c7 which is purple and purple and orange 
and we're at C6, which is blue, blue, and yellow. And then we're at C5, which is teal, and teal, and green. And then we're going to go to C4, which is pink, and pink, and red. C3 is purple, and that's orange and purple. And then we have my yellow, my blue, and my blue. And then we have the very last one, which is, I'm gonna actually just stack these in order here and do these separate. Oops don't need that one I just need purple and then the green and then we have these two colors here and this is my so side let's see five and you guys are welcome to talk to yourself as well when you're doing this. It's quite common. <laughs> okay. So, I have the two corner pieces that I'm going to do separately. And all of these are done the same way. So now, all I have to do is pick up my stack, keep it in order, and then you go through and you number all your papers and that way when you start going when you get started on it you can see exactly where you're what paper you're at but the other thing that's kind of cool about this one is that you're not going to get lost as long as because these papers actually are already numbered i forgot that normally they're not but these are already numbered so i start with 19 is on the bottom and I have my number 19 color on the bottom. So I need to reverse them because I flipped them when I was stacking them. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2. So now we're in order. So the last piece on is going to be, um, so that's my C2, and the last piece is this one. Oh, so C2 is a little bit different as well, so I'm going to actually take C2, uh, it'll be fine that way. So my stacking order for my pieces are just like that. Now, as I go through, I'm going to get all of these pieces in this very first pile are going to go on to my foundation papers. So this is where you have the other option to stack. So if I wanted, I could actually come through here and I could put my purple in a pile, my pinks in a pile, and my teals in a pile. And then I would come back here. This is blue and yellow. This is teal, purple and orange do you see what I'm saying and then I could put all of my blues and get the right colors to go with it which seems to be a little bit simpler for a lot of people's brains to work that way it's just harder to write that because there's really no numer numerical order in what you're doing you're actually sorting by color and going to do all of these colors first does that make I'm hoping I make sense there right I'm going to do it the way the instructions tell me so everything's going back in order and I'm just going to show you the process. So I have all my papers here. We're going to clean all this stuff off because I don't need it anymore. I probably will need those. It'll be short. Sure. 
If you guys have to sort all of this and leave it, make sure you leave some templates on it so that you know what you're, what you're working with. So we're going to take the very first piece. I'm going to find um, my repositionable glue, which maybe I'm not. I'm just going to use this today because this is a heavier fabric and it works a little bit better than the repositionable glue. So I'm going to take and put my fabric upside down, right, wrong side up. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on the back side of that. I don't need a lot of glue on it. Then I'm going to take the next piece and just a little bit of glue on the back side of that. Then we take the next piece and we're going to find section one. Oops, let's start this over and read it so that I don't do it wrong. <laughs> All right, section one. I had it on section three. There's section one. Here's section one. Okay. And then my section one on this piece is right here in the middle. So I'm going to lay that down there so that I have fabric on both sides of these lines. Can you see what I'm doing here? Can they see where I'm pointing? Yep, yep, and okay. hold on just a second. I have a question from someone. Okay. Uh, Janice asks, this is part three, is part one and two available on YouTube? Yes, so it's also available on our recorded Facebook Live videos, and um, so you can go back and watch those as well. Um, and there's also a pre-class instruction video and a couple other things. If you go to our YouTube channel and then click on playlist and choose Macaw Queen or Macaw, you'll see all the videos for it there. So, so notice how all of these pieces are just lining up perfectly. And we just go through the stack. And I'm going to quit on, actually, I'm trying to think, I need to quit on this one. So I'm going to just do four colors so you guys don't have to watch me do them all. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take the rest of this stack and put it with my other papers. If I was doing this for myself, I would be doing the whole stack, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I can kind of see where my papers are setting here, and you, you're going to notice that you have a lot of excess on some of these, and I like to kind of get the paper stacked as best I can and I can't do that on the little one and I'm just going to get rid of some of this excess and I'm going to get rid of some of that at the bottom to do what I just did you kind of have to be a little bit confident in what you're doing you may be better off to just wait a couple rounds before you start trimming that off. Okay, so we're going to put that down, back down on the bottom. So now I'm, I have my unit C5 on the top. Okay, normally I would have the 20 on the top or the 19. And I'm going to go to what's called line 1. And I'm going to place my fold template down. I'm going to add a quarter ruler and we're going to trim. And then we're just going to set it aside just like this. We're going to pick up the next one. Put the add a quarter. Trim. Preset back and stack it. Add a quarter. Stack. 
that's actually fold back and trim and stack. Fold back, trim, and stack. I glued those papers together. All right, so I'm going to mention something. Some people ask me, why, why do I have so much waste, okay? In some situations, I, when we actually design our template pieces, we will cut a strip of fabric, and then we'll take and build a template that's fairly close to the size of what you need, and we'll lay that template out onto that strip of fabric and then we'll take a look at it so we could have cut all of these at a slant and then you would have had to flip flop and do a lot of different type of cutting but what happens is when we get done and we figure out the the, the best or the way to do it that's the most um that uses the least amount of fabric is normally what we look for first is to find something that uses the least amount of fabric then we'll look at it and go well if I just cut a strip and use a strip of fabric on there then it's only going to maybe use an extra half an inch of fabric so why not cut a strip because it might be faster in this situation we chose to stay with the strips because if you have a striped fabric, what it's going to do is it's going to give you your your grain line and your stripes are going to go in the same direction. Where if we'd actually cut all of the slants on it, we would have had this side and this side differently. So we decided that it was best to stay with the strip because my fabric on this, you can see where the, the line work goes and it would have made these all the different a different angle. So we actually look at Every, all the templates we make, we look for the best way to present that to you in a template. And sometimes it may require us having a little bit more waste of fabric in order to accommodate for striped fabric. All right. So don't get too undone over the fact that you might have a little bit more waste in some situations. Because we actually look at several things when we're doing that. Is a layout sheet uh, going to save fabric or is it going to save time? And we, we have a process where we just go through and then I make the decision and you're stuck with it. Okay, so now we're going to take our yellow piece. This is my sew side. If I had my template there on there, it would show me that that's my sew side. And actually that's not my sew side. And I threw the template away. So anyway, put the template on it. This is my sew side right here. And that's why you want to keep your templates with your pieces so that you can actually see where it's at. There it is. And when you put it on there, it says sew side. Then when I pick this piece up, I'm actually going to take this and I, on this piece, I fold it on the wrong line. I folded on line two. I actually want to be here. So we're going to recut that. And now I'm going to draw because here's my triangle that I have to cover. And I'm going to lay this right down like that. So now I have the trimmed edges matched up with the raw edge of the triangle piece. And I cut this one. This one I cut right. Now I'm going to take my whole stack now and I'm going to turn it with my sew sides that direction and I'm going to put this piece on top like that 
And what I'm looking for is I need to have a little bit of that triangle shown at the bottom. And then I have to find where that point is. On the first one, I drew that section in there. So you can kind of see where that section rides. And I have to make sure that the fabric's underneath there. On this one, I didn't draw the section. But if I look at my first one, I'm setting it about a quarter of an inch above the bottom of that piece so I can see just a little bit of the yellow. I can see I have plenty here. So if I just line all of these up basically off the bottom of my paper, then it's going to give me the same, it's going to position them in the same place. So this piece is supposed to go with the purple. I like to look at it just to double check. Orange goes to purple and I'm going to stack that right there just so I can see a little bit of the orange fabric at the bottom. Then we're going to stack the next purple. And then we have a red. The red goes with pink. We're stacking that. I can see just a little bit of the red fabric at the bottom. I'm going to slide it just a little bit so I can see a little bit more. When you're doing paper piecing, once if you know where the sew side is, when you put this piece on, basically all you have to do is slide it this way or this way to make sure that it's centered properly. So I'm, but you have to find something that you're going to line up to. And I'm lining up to the bottom of the paper and making sure I can see my fabric. And now we're going to take this one. And we're going to take this one. Okay, so because I have a lot of fabrics here, I like to actually, when I have a big stack, because I'm going to have 80 of these here, so trying to get 80 of them stacked, so what I like to do is come through here and actually put a little bit of glue, and I'm lifting up <clears throat> the fabric that's on top, folding it back over the paper and gluing in the seam allowance area so that those pieces don't move when I bring them to my machine. Now what you will find is if you're new to paper piecing, this technique is a great idea. If you've been doing a lot of paper piecing, you're gonna look at this and say, I can just pick it up and move it over there without the glue. And that's okay, because you, under, you taught yourself how to get from this position to there. But for a new person, by the time they pick something up, if the fabrics aren't glued together along those raw edges, by the time they get over here, it's moved on them, and then they can't remember which way to put it back on. So this is just, it's kind of like training wheels on a bicycle. All right, so we have all those glued together, but see what happens when I glue it? It doesn't come off. Okay, because I glued in the raw edges of the seam allowance. Now we're ready to start sewing. I'm going to downsize my stitch. This is a heavier fabric than what my batiks are, so it's more it's a, a woven cotton, and so I'm going to set it at about a 1.9. And I have white thread in today, which is fine. You guys can choose the color of your thread. So we're going to just pick up each one of these. I'm going to start with number five, my C5 one on the top. If I was doing the whole stack, I would have my C19 on the top there. And I'm just going to open it up. I'm going to lift my needle, and we're going to start sewing. And before I sew, I'm going to explain... So I want you to find line one on your paper, and there's a. it's going to go all the way up to a dashed line along line two. You're going to go past there, and you're going to start sewing about four to five stitches above that dashed line, all right, on each one of the pieces. And now we're just going to start sewing. Okay, so 
If I have a machine that has a thread cutter, I probably wouldn't use it in this situation because that thread cutter, the more you use it, the more length that you, it's going to get created. And by the time I got with my strip, it would probably tell me I needed to cut, clean my thread cutter. So sometimes I'll look at my paper piecing and how big my stacks are, and I'll actually just chain them and leave the thread in between them rather than use the thread cutter. Okay. I don't have a thread cutter on this machine. It's a little classroom machine. Um, the other thing is when you have those little swatches on your paper, if they overlap your, any of your sew lines, just pull them off. Okay. So I'm going to lift my pressure foot and then I'm going to set it back down on the next piece. And all I did was just pull it off to the side. I'm going to move this so that you can kind of see a little bit what we're doing. And I'm going to sew on line one. And then we're going to pick the next piece up. I'm going to lift, just pull it back a little bit. These are pretty small pieces, so it's not going to really use a lot more thread to just keep the thread attached. Plus, it keeps them in order for you. So when you start doing all your paper piecing, if you're like most of the women that come into the retreat, they'll get all everything sorted, everything in order, and then they'll sit down and start doing their paper piecing. That's when they get out their coffee or their wine or whatever, and they just start because it's really boring to just sit here and run these through. <laughs> so. They spend a lot of time gabbing and having a good time while they're just running their papers through. But it's a lot of times it's in the evening when I'm not there. It's only 80. <laughs> Hi. I said it's only 80. I know. <laughs> you can get a lot of paper piecing done in an evening. And... The biggest thing is you just have to be a little careful of how much wine you drink when you're doing it. <laughs> because when you drink too much, sometimes I come in and have to pick out what you put together at night. So. <laughs> and that's only if they're here. If not, then you'll be picking out your own mistakes. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to actually go through, and that's my C2. Those are all C2s. These are my C3's papers. These are C4's. And this is the C5. And now I'm going to take them all to my iron. And we're going to press. And I'm just going to speed through the pressing on these. If you have the acorn pressing um, starch pin, you can actually just take that and rub that right along the back and then press and that just creases that line really nice. <laughs> Teresa says she's definitely referring to me. Thank you for keeping me straight. So she, you may have picked out a few for Teresa <laughs> while <laughs> she was here. <laughs> 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 it keeps me busy.
All right, so now I have all my papers, and I'm just going to look at the top one, and this is my C2 on the top. I actually want to start <laughs> doing the trimming with the C5 on the top, so I'm going to flip them over, because when I get my stack, I want C5 on the bottom, because this is my next fabric starts with C2, the C2 fabric. So we're going to take this, and we're going to grab our fold template, we're going to place it on line two. We're going to fold back. Now, remember, we sewed all the way through that dashed line, and so it's up in here. So my fabrics, when I fold it back, I have to bring the fabric with it. Then I'm just going to put my fingers underneath the fabric, and I'm going to tear that fabric back, and it's going to tear a hole down the seam line. And some people like to go back and they'll spend a lot of effort taping all of that back together. Don't tape it because you really want that torn at this point because it makes it easier to remove the paper out of those little points because you've already tore half of the paper off of that. Now I'm going to take this, add a quarter, and we're going to trim. And then we're going to set it aside again. We're going to pick up the next piece, place it on line two, Put your finger underneath. Put your hand on the fold template. Fold the fabric over with the paper and then take and tear that back and it'll tear the thread away from the paper. So now the fabric lays down and then you're going to pick this up and you're going to trim the excess and then you're going to stack it. I'm going to hurry through this stack because I want to show you one more step. The other thing I want you to notice when you're doing this, pay attention that when you actually fold that back and tear it, sometimes you'll tear a big hole. It doesn't really matter as long as it's torn. But you have that thread that's there. Just pull that thread out of the way. And now when I cut, it trims all my threads. And I don't end up with a hundred thousand thread ends on the back of my quilt because I have I've cleaned everything off right at that um, trim seam allowance. It's all of my threads off. And I know that when you begin with paper piecing, you don't always know little tricks like that. So when you're done, you're trying to pull the papers off and you have a million threads on the back and it's hard to get the paper off around them. Fold that back. Trim. Pull that thread out of there. So now we're going to take, start with the next stack. We're going to put this over here. And I have my blue fabric. And it should match up with the blue. And I'm just going to lay that piece on there just like that. We're going to take the next blue fabric, line it up with the last one, and put this on. And I can see that I have blue fabric there and blue fabric up here. Plenty. There's lots of leftovers, but the reality is it was just made more sense and it actually, we could get more pieces onto our strips when we designed this by just cutting straight strips rather than slanted ones. And we just keep going down our pile. And that's paper piecing and that's how you guys are going to do the border and they just they're fun to make so I'm actually going to just because 
we're not going to go any further with this. And I'm going to put it in a bag and hand this over to my Carolyn and let her finish them. So. And what time is it? Let's see. I don't know. Oh, it's 2.16. 2.16? So you have lots of time. Oh, yeah. Good. All right. So you guys are going to um, get all the paper piecing done. Remember, you can, as long as you get them sewn up, that's what you want to do is just set up a rhythm and get them all pieced. Then you're going to lay them out onto your wall and note that each one of these still has the number on it. And we usually will remove the paper and then I'll just leave the number on something. So if I have a stack of four, I'm going to have that numbered. Um, pin to that stack. Then I like to lay them out and make sure that I've got everything in order and I didn't mess it up. So now when we start to assemble, these are really fun because we've cut all of these smart corners. So when I start sewing, it looks like I want to start sewing Actually, I could start sewing on either end because this piece goes on to here and then everything's just a straight line. So this is section two. So we're going to take these sections here and I'm going to lay them down on my table and I'm going to show you guys how to match up with your sew sides or your smart corners. So for those of you that may not have seen the other two, these little places where I've cut right here, those were cut when we trimmed the paper off because of our smart corners, okay? So you're gonna have this now. When I actually take this, and I take this piece, and I flip it over, it's gonna match perfectly here and here. And if it doesn't match perfectly, then what you're going to do is go back and check and see if you trimmed it properly. Chances are you may not have, and I'm going to give you permission that if you didn't trim them properly, then they're not going to match. You're just going to take that and you're going to trim it to match because all it means is that you forgot to trim the smart corners or maybe you didn't trim on the line, but they should match perfectly. Can you guys see that, the way that's set up? Yep. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is there's a couple things here. So I'm working with a heavier fabric, and this piece right here, if I flip that seam over like that, see how that gives me a little dog ear? I'm going to take and cut that little dog ear off right there. Now when it comes back, Basically, that's going to take a lot of the bulk out of where that dog ear folds over. Sometimes it's, it doesn't press down as nice. This will take the bulk out of it, and it works really, really good when you're working with heavy fabrics. Now I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to put glue at that end on that smart corner, and I'm going to put glue here, and I'm going to match the ends. So now, if my machine sews really well and I can get this to go, I can just pick this up and sew through it. But I have bias on the bottom. Chances are that bias is going to stretch as it's going through my machine. The piece on the top is the straight of the grain because the way we cut our strips, we put those edges on the straight of the grain. So it's probably going to work better for me if I actually come in here and put a couple more little swatches of glue along there. And this is a fabric glue. And then all I have to do is just pick this up. So when you have bias on the bottom and straight of the grain on the top, then the, the feed dogs are going to pull that bias in 
and it won't stretch the straight of the grain all right but sometimes that bias doesn't pull in as nice as you want it to and so I find that if I glue those raw edges together it pulls the, all of the pieces through at the same time and it works really really good so now I'm just going to set up my quarter inch seam and we're into traditional piecing now I'm going to increase my stitch to about a 2.1 with this fabric because I don't want it to be really tight because this is a heavier fabric and it looks like this machine wants me to go up to a 2.2 you'll be able to tell because if it stretches the fabric as you're going through then that means your stitch length is too tight for the fabric you're working if it gathers it it's too loose so you want that to just feed flat and just adjust your seam allowance or your stitch length to whatever length you need to get it to stay flat now i'm done if you have a thread cutter use your thread cutter and cut that okay now we're going to take the next piece and that one's going to go on to here all right and we just keep adding them on now if you've been doing a lot of sewing what you're going to find is when you're building these you can actually sort them out and you can put two onto one and then you would come over here and this is teal and you could take those two and stack those and sew those take these two and sew these these two sew these and these two and sew those okay and after you get that done then you can come back and pick up all of your next pieces which would be the purple and sew the purples on each one of those groups if you're doing this you have to make sure that you're keeping your papers on the back someplace and you may have to put a little pin in some of those to hold those so that you'll know when you put it up when you get all your groups together um, that you'll be able to put them on the wall in the right order all right when i press i'm actually going to press everything to the same direction so we're going to take this piece I dropped my little um, starch there somewhere now I'm going to add the next piece on there okay so if you want to do these in groups of four you can actually sew them in groups of four but you need to make sure that you keep the paper on one of your pieces so you know which one that we started with number one or number four and it would be every fourth number is where your groups are going to end up and we're going to do it again and I'm going to sew this seam and I'm going to show you one more trick here Okay, so this seam did not have a tab that folded over, so there was I didn't have to do any of the any um, cut any dog ears off. But one of the things that if you guys are doing quilts for like a national show and you're wanting to be judged on it, when you start working with quilts like rainbow quilts or quilts that have black and white in it, your your seams are going to show if you don't get them matched perfectly sometimes you'll have shadows on it well you can actually after you sew a seam before you go to the iron to press if you have to worry if you're worried about something shadowing like that then just come back and as you sew each seam just take and run your ruler right along the edge and I can clean up 
And now I have no shadow from anything because I've cleaned all of the excess that might be causing a little shadow. Now I can go to my iron and then I'm going to, if I find my starch, it must be on the floor. That's all right. And then we're going to press and keep everything to the same direction. The nicer your pressing is, the nicer that piece is going to come together for you. And you just keep sewing the, your borders together until you get them all done. So. I gave you two options. You can start here and sew everything and add it in order because you're going to have four of everything. Go to your iron or you can actually set it up to where you just start with your teal and then set it up in groups as well. All right. So that's it for our lessons on the borders. So now you guys have to go home and, or you have to start doing those border pieces. <laughs> Everyone's now, already at home. <laughs> yeah. I keep forgetting that. Um, so the next thing I want to go over is let's just touch bases on the queen size border, the prep work for the queen border next week. All right. So. You guys are going to go through, and if you did your quilt in Quiltster, it has all your strips, and you probably already have those all cut. If you didn't do your strips in Quiltster, then you're going to um, have to go through the cutting instructions. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find out how many bags you need. You're going to cut all your foundation papers, all right? And I want you to note that on your geese, you have a unit D3, a D2, a D4, D5, 6, and 7, okay? And what you're going to find is some of those are opposite, okay? So you're going to have some geese that the inside geese are going to be opposite of the other one. And I believe it's um, D, if I look at this picture, it's going to be D, D6 and what's the other one? At the end, it shows it's unit D3 yeah. and D6 Is it on D3? page 35. You can see it a little bit better. Okay. I don't have page 35. Oh, yeah, your, yeah. your assembly is different because you use yeah. the mixers. But, yes, it's, in the, it's on illustration one at the final assembly step. You'll see it's D6 and D3 are. Yeah. D6 and D3 are the ones that are different, okay? So what you're going to do is when you get all your fabric set up, you're going to paste on one pile the on every single unit not every paper but every group of papers which is four you're going to set your colors up so you'll start with whatever color you want to be your first color and do a paste on that group of the eight colors and what you're going to have to do and i don't i actually i do have them I was thinking that I left these. So, I have everything bagged here. In my bag D4, that is D6 and D3, okay? And here are my colors for them. Now, I can actually paper piece both of these at the same time, even though they're different sizes, all right? It, it's not gonna make any difference. 
whether I pay for piece them at the same time. And actually, they these are the same sizes. I just had a fold in one. So I'm going to go through here, and we're going to put a little fabric swatch in the order in which we have our color set up. And I have all my fabrics here. So just take and cut a little uh, chunk of fabric and get those all in order. Now, this piece has to go like this. I'm going to put these back into the bag. And these pieces go like this, okay? So what, when you lay this out, if you put this like this, and then you set up your color order from here all the way, you're going to put them in backwards. So make sure that this one is turned upside down. And fabric number one, section one on D5, should be the same color as section one on D6, and the same color as section one on the D2 one, and, I, and the ones underneath it as well. So I want you guys to get all your papers cut out, get your fabrics organized, put a little swatch on each one of these. And then what we do is we take these and we paper piece these, this group together and we paper piece that group together. And the reason why you want to do them in two groups is because as you start folding back, this is going to fold back this way. And when you're doing the other ones, everything is just the opposite so they don't run through your machine very well so it's just easier to do the two groups right so you're going to get your papers cut you're going to get all your fabrics you're going to have two bags this is goes back in this bag and these go in this one notice that i have all of my template layout sheets that i haven't cut yet those are from my D2. There's all of my fabrics for this pile of geese, and I already cut all of the D1s. And each one of these little stacks, I believe, have eight pieces in them. There's two, four, six. There should be eight pieces in there because I'm going to have that many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because I have eight papers. So your stack should have eight layers in each one of these. So that's your prep work there. Then the other thing you're going to have is don't worry about cutting all of this out. Just get your strips. And I'm going to go through the cutting on all of the big background pieces next week in class. All right. So just put all of your big pieces for your tea templates into a bag. And the instructions will tell you which bag they go in. And then the other thing you have are... The D1, this is D1L, and this one, these papers here, are D1R, okay? Now, the template layout sheets for D1R and D1L are together, okay? So you don't have a separate layout sheet for each one, they're actually on the same piece, I believe. Let's look at this. This is a D1R, so that's going to go with that. That's a D1L. Um, but the cutting is set up to where it goes together. And then on these, I believe you're cutting the left and right pieces out of the same ones. So what the instructions tell you to do is to take the layout sheets and put them all with the D1R. And after the cutting's done, then you'll separate out the pieces into the two bags. So you'll have your right pieces in one bag, your left pieces in the other bag. But get the cutting done and then worry about the separation of color. Because each one of these colors 
you have to cut your left and right pieces on that same off the same strip all right and it's the same way with the big one too so those instructions just read through that as you're going and if you can get everything basically cut into strips and stacked and paired with your layout sheets then we'll start going through the paper piecing and how to do the curb piecing next week during that last class all right i think that's all i have does anybody have any more questions um do we have any questions anyone um while we wait for a couple questions to pop up, I'm going to switch over to Quiltster and show you a couple things there. I also just remembered um, one of our other quilts that has this same border is publishing in the next two days. And the reason it's not done today is because we're doing a video. But that is the... Um, Alchemist's Crystal, which a lot of you probably have seen, and if you haven't, I'll show it to you, but um, it uses the same exact border for the D group, the one that we're going to teach next week. So, all right, I thought I'd come in here on the Marketplace um, quilt kits and um, show you a couple kits that Quilt Works has specifically, and then we can go through a couple others for those of you who don't have a kit yet. So if you're looking for macaw kits, the fastest way to find them here is just go here into search on Marketplace, and you don't have to have Quiltster to access the Marketplace, and then just click Macaw, and that sorts out um, all of the kits that are available for Macaw from any designer. So. Quiltworks has, we have this Tula um, in teals and purples. Um, it says we are out of stock on the Macan Loop and, and Pumpkin Spice in the wall size, and that is true. I currently cannot make any more of those, but I was able to get one more queen. So even though this says out of stock after this video, I'll go in and I'll change that. Um, it says we have one macaw queen and tula dots left i can cut more of that now i don't know exactly how many more but i'll probably cut three more and then i have the tula dots in the macaw in the wall size and it looks like that one sold out over the week so i can cut a couple more of those because i have the black i just got more black fabric in so um and the same with the tula pink macaw this one doesn't use the dots this uses the flowers and it has the panda bears in it so it just depends on what combination you like the best I think they're both cute um, and then you can see there's a few other kits here from quilt works that we just have a couple left on of some in Tonga boutiques some in we have one left in the wall in the cotton and I cannot make any more after that and then there's kits from several other um, designers or several other of our sellers in Quiltster. So looks like there's some blues and teals and some other different rainbow collections. Uh, I see Quiltworks has a couple left that are out of the Inda Batiks, which are some really bold geometrics type batiks that um, I think they kind of have a modern look to them from uh, Hoffman Fabrics. So anyway, it's just kind of fun to look through all of the different options and see what's out there. And then I thought I would pull up a, um, let's see here. Oh, I don't want to go there. I want to go, where's the best place? Um, I wanted to show you guys Alchemist Crystal. How about, I might have to pop into my Dropbox to show you that. Dropbox. So let's go into Dropbox here. And I'm, this one's literally publishing in two days. Um, probably by Friday. 
and then we have to we'll pack it we'll also package on friday and um start shipping maybe friday but mostly on monday so let's open up here's alchemist crystals so this is our other new design and it's coming and you can see it uses the same flying geese queen block that we're going to do a live workshop on next week um, this is out of uh, tim holtz fabrics from free spirit and i will have i think i have enough to do 12 kits is what we're cutting the only thing is when i ordered the fabrics i forgot to order this beautiful gray so it's on its way it's just not here quite yet so i'll probably get those listed um probably by friday on facebook or not facebook uh well you'll probably see them there too but um because i'll post it on facebook but they'll be listed in quiltsters kits i will have 12 lots of other shops have this fabric to do kits as well so if it's something that you're interested in um, it's definitely available and um, mine will just have to ship as soon as that fabric gets here. So, which should be sometime either late next week or sometime early the week after. So, uh, anyway, um, so let's switch back here to, hi. All right, um, I'm gonna look, see if there was any questions. Uh, someone said, what border could I use to square off Dreamcatcher? Uh, good question. Okay, so let's go to the website. I got a... It's 68 inches, isn't it? It's 62 inches round. So it's going to be oh. different than these borders, but I will show it to you. Oops, I typed in the wrong thing. Okay, let's go back to the website here okay we're going to switch over to the quilt works website and then we're going to go to patterns and we're going to go find dream catcher so give me just a little second here um one thing i'm super excited about is we're getting a new website it's not something that's happening tomorrow but we are working on it and it's going to make sorting our sorting through our patterns and finding things so much easier so um, we are actively working on that now. Um, so if you're one who's like, well, I never know where to find the patterns on QuiltWorks website because like, you have to go down and click on and guess or you have to sort them by alphabetical order. So if, you, if you're one that's like, oh, I wish they had a better search, it's coming along with a lot of other cool things that are going to come with the website. So um, a better and easier way to link products and fabrics and different things like that. So Dreamcatcher finishes to 68 inches. And if you want to expand it and square it off, you can square it off to 80 inches first by getting a group C. So if on Dreamcatcher, if you go down and you get this group C or the Sunrise Mixer introduction booklet, then that gives you how to do the final assembly on this piece with this adding the C border. And then you can choose the C borders and, oh, you also have to choose a B. So you have to get a group B and a group C. So you'll have to choose your group B piece, which is either the crown ring, the sawtooth ring, or the chevron ring. And then you can choose from any number of group C borders. Oh, there's a flying geese ring. So there's several group C borders that you can choose from. And we actually even have more of those coming soon with our snowfall mixer series. So that'll get that to 80 inches square. Um, now it's not shown here yet, but anything that we can get to 80 inches. So I'm going to show you guys something that's new. Um, and it's not shown in Dreamcatcher yet, but we got to get all these new products linked. Um, we do have a border that will take an 80 inch size to 118 inches. So I'm going to show you where to find it because right now, until I get all of the patterns updated, it's not as easy to find it. But under this Snowfall Mixer Father Time King, and it looks like we need to update these graphics because they say 116 and it's actually 118. 
Um, so if you click on the button, you'll see we'll take this log cabin center star out of there as well. That doesn't need to be linked there. But there's a Father Time King introduction booklet, which gives you assembly for how to put the whole thing together and add this king border piece. And then there's this wagon wheel king border. So you would need to have both of those at this time to get your, if you wanted to take it clear up to a king size. So hopefully that helps answer your question. And then, um, let's see, is there any other questions? Um, we'll watch this and see if any other questions pop up. And then also next week, again, we'll be on at 1230 so we can answer questions in the meantime. And I'm actually going to switch back to this so, so that you don't have to watch what so otherwise you see a million screens that are kind of <laughs> all the same information. So let's see. Let's go back. Okay. So now you can see me. Um, so anyway, um, we'll be on a half hour early next week to do the queen border so we can answer some questions or anything in addition to that. And um, if you leave posts along the way, I'll do my best to find them and answer them as well. So uh, with that, I guess we're done with class a little bit early today. And um, thank you guys all for tuning in. So, all right, I'm going to say bye. Say bye, Mom. Bye, bye. everybody. <laughs> Let's see.